This audio is for educational purposes only. I hope this will add light to your journey. Please share this audio to your loved ones, family and friends. Thank you. The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life by Drunvalo Melki Zedek Egypt's Role in the Evolution of Consciousness Introduction to Some Basic Concepts Egyptian Tools and Symbols of Resurrection The ancients used certain symbols to represent the three aspects of consciousness we use for our sojourn here on earth. You'll see representations of these symbols all over the world. These depictions have one animal that lives underground, one that walks on the earth, and one that flies over the earth. The animal that lives under the ground represents the microcosm. The one who flies through the air represents the macrocosm, and the one who walks the earth represents the middle level between the two, like us. The same symbols are everywhere. In Egypt, you'll see a vulture on the left, the right eye of Horus in the middle, then a cobra on the right, figure 5, 1. In Peru, it's the condor, the puma, and the rattlesnake. For the American Indians, it's the eagle, the mountain lion, and the rattlesnake. In Tibet, it's a chicken, a pig, and a snake. This photo, figure 5, too, shows the tools and symbols of resurrection the Egyptians used. The object at point A is a shortened form of a rod that's usually about 4 feet long and has a little tuning fork on one end and a 45 degree angle on the other end. This was used at the back of the head to transfer vibration into the body. Along with that they used the hook and the flail which we'll see in just a moment. Arrow B points to the oval which is usually a red-orange color, that you see over the initiate's heads. This was the symbol for the metamorphosis that happens, when we go through resurrection, or ascension, when we literally change the shape, and chemistry of our body. Arrow C, shows a power generator they sometimes use to increase the vibration. Unfortunately, Thoth left before I could fully understand the use of this object. Arrow D, indicates the ankh, which I understand more, and I'll give you my understanding. It's the most important tool of understanding they possessed. From an Egyptian point of view, it's the key to eternal life. Arrow E points to a triangle within a triangle, which is the Egyptian hieroglyphic for the star Sirius, the symbol for Sirius A and Sirius B. Point F is just a name called a cartouche. The bird at the top right is a vulture, which is sacred to the Egyptians and associated with the movement from one level of consciousness to another. I'm not going to go into the other things in the picture, but these are some of the tools the early Egyptians used. The difference between dying, resurrection and ascension. These geometric images, figure 5, 3 come from the Old Kingdom. The little flower of life patterns are associated with Leherit, the pyramid that I believe destroys the Saqqara theory. Figure 5, 4, is a picture of Osiris, on the left. He's holding a crook, a, a 45 degree rod, with a tuning fork on the end, b, and a flail, c. Which are the three primary instruments used for resurrection. These tools were connected with resurrection, not ascension. There's a difference between the two. What is the difference? First of all, there's dying. A process where you go into the void state, immediately after death. You're unconscious, unaware of the dying process, to the degree that you have no control over the images. This way of dying, takes you into the third overtone of the fourth dimension, which results in your cycling back into this earth existence, again and again, reincarnation. Because you're unconscious in this cycle, you're not using your mirkaba, except unconsciously, so once you get to the other side, you don't have any memories of this side. When you reincarnate back to earth again, you don't have any memories of where you just came from, either. So the reincarnating just keeps going on and on. It's a lot of energy moving very slowly. You eventually get through it, but it's a very slow process. When you go through resurrection, you're aware and conscious of your mirkaba, though usually, you don't become fully aware of it, until after you die. You die, you drop the body, and then you become aware of your mirkaba. Then you recreate your body, and go through a process that leads you into either the 10th, 11th, 
or twelfth overtone of the fourth dimension. From there, you don't go through reincarnation anymore. Your memory is never blocked again, and you continue on into eternal life. There's a big difference between dying and resurrection, but there's an even greater difference in ascension, which is now possible since the grid was completed in 1989. Ascension was highly unlikely until this grid was complete. In ascension, you don't die at all, there's no death process involved as we know it. Of course, it is true that you no longer are on earth, and from that point of view, you die. What happens is, you simply become aware of your Mirkaba, one way or another. Either remembering it on your own, being taught it, or however it happens to you. This means, you become aware of your body as light, then you're able to pass through the void, totally consciously, from the earth side. Through the void, to the higher dimensions, aware the whole time. In this way you simply walk out of this life, without going through the death process, which involves reconstructing your human body. When a person ascends, he, she, simply disappears from this dimension, and reappears in the next, passing through the void. Ascension is now completely possible, and this book is one possible set of instructions on exactly how to accomplish this process. You personally might not pass through ascension. You might actually die, or go through resurrection. It doesn't make much difference, at this point in the game of life on planet Earth, because if you die in the normal manner, you'll go into the third overtone, and into a holding pattern for a while. Then, when the rest of the Earth cycles through this coming change, all people on that third overtone will also rise to the same dimensional level as those who resurrected or ascended. Even the Bible refers to this, saying that at this time, the dead will rise. There is no such thing as death, there are just different states of being. It's a little like water, which can be a liquid, solid ice or gas fog, but it is still water. Right now, very few human reincarnations are occurring on earth, except under certain conditions. This is probably your last life folks, this is it. Of course, there are exceptions to almost all rules, so there may be a few on this earth, who have decided to reincarnate. Time is running out, if we make it to the end of this century, I'll be amazed. I seriously doubt, if the T. Her dimension will still be available for human life by that time. Only God knows for certain. Where are the people coming from, who are being born on earth today? Not from here. I'll explain when I talk about the new children.